How's it going ladies and bruises, I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome to a new series we're going to be doing on a game called Scarlet Hollow. Now this is a game that, uh, well I mean, this is a game that's episodic. Uh, the first episode came out last year at some point. So it's not super new, but episode 2 just came out, I think. Or is just about to come out. I've had a message from the developers anyway, so... If, if we like the look of it, we can definitely go on and uh, work our way right through it. It's meant to be very uh, choice driven. It's a visual novel. Let's jump in and see what we think, shall we? It's got very good reviews so far. Uh, Bruce, of course. Live in the city of... Uh, Bruceopolis, of course. Everyone knows that. Uh, does not impact gameplay. Sure. Traits unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Dude, this sounds fascinating already. Powerful build, strong, athletic, pinnacle of fitness, can shotgun a root beer in th three seconds. Strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in ways others cannot. You can talk to animals. Animals can talk to you. A gift and a curse. Smell BS. Also good at BS. No door can hold you. Attractive. Charming. People want to either be with you or be you. You know a lot about a lot of fun facts. Research your favorite activity. Straight A student. Observant. Picks up on vibes. Understands others' perspectives. Hmm. I usually like to go for charisma-based uh, <laughs> builds in most RPGs that allow it. So let's go with damn sexy. That's going to be our trait. Hotter. Oh, we get two. <gasps> Dude. Well, I like that. Let's go... Mystical. That sounds fascinating. Just sounds like a fascinating trade all around, you know? Although Keen Eye sounds good. Book Smart sounds... I don't know. They're all they're all pretty good. Mystical and hot. <laughs> sounds good. You jolt away because the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off and now here you are. Awake again and still exhausted. For a moment you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is. Confusing this bus with many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long, long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself travelling like this, but your cousin brought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he's even, he even stopped when he started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but there were several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies are doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the harbour, that sort of thing. This sounds fucking intense. Wait, what? <laughs> Pushing joggers into the harbour? Yeah, you know, teen stuff. That's fucked, man. <laughs> so this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she's going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend, and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she was really mad. And not just planned. So she kept swinging, and soon enough, she lost her balance and fell into the harbour all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out, and her phone got soaked, so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that. We've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Wait, on and off for about a year doesn't sound very serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me. Like, for real, and jeez. You ever get so mad you just want to, like, kill somebody? <laughs> Hot. Nobody's ever broken up with me. Threaten. I kind of feel like killing someone right now. <laughs> Smile and pretend he didn't just say that. Let's go with that. You smile and pretend he didn't just say that. I knew you'd get me. We understand each other. Someone trying to break your heart, it changes a person. It makes them do things they never thought they'd want to do. I honestly could have killed that woman. Ha! Huh. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for him. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus in New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. What the f... What is wrong with you? 
Your girlfriend is giving birth right now and you're thinking about ditching her to go have fun in New York after she tried to break up with you and you threatened to kill her? Hey now, I never threatened to kill her. Okay, maybe over text. Just a little. But fatherhood's scary. Plus, her mum is there. So it's not like she's alone. Her mum doesn't like me much, so it'd probably just make things super stressful. She'll understand, she's chill. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I'm just returning to my ancestral home. My mother fled from her destiny there many years ago, but now that both she and her sister have departed from this world, I can feel it calling me back. I'm going to enjoy doing these mystical options, I think. The young man anxiously shifts in his seat. For one perceptible moment, it's his turn to feel uncomfortable before he catches himself and heartily laughs. Oh, you must be talking about Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the Holler, as they call it in the mountains. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around, so if you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be headed up that way. Almost nobody ever goes there. I'm usually alone on the bus by now. Though actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there, working in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see. And there's always a job list or two on the boards around here. I never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while. Now that I think about it, I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone once focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. I better get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. The stranger ruffles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at the gas station a few buses back. I know she haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Uh, take the peanuts. You take the peanuts. Thanks. You're welcome. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. I don't want to eat the peanuts, but I'll take them so you'll just leave. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scala Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. The bus finally comes to a stop, it's brakes squeaking as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. Well, the sign reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though, for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Hey Bruce! You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. Um. Offer her the boiled peanuts as a condolence. Want some peanuts? I got them from the bus. You hold out the dripping bag, offering it to your cousin. What? Put those away. Why would I want your, pe your wet peanuts? Now come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. Whatever. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip. Dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. Interesting. So if we go to remain silent, we skip ahead, and if we go explore, we can learn more information. <laughs> I guess we're both are members of the Dead Mums Club now, huh? That's fucked up. How are you holding up? Fine. You know you can talk to me, right? I lost my mum too. I know we only just met, but you know I went through something similar with my own mum. If you ever need a vent or... I'm good. Tabitha says, stares straight ahead, their expression tense and icy. Have we ever actually met? I'm pretty sure this is the first time, right? Yep, you have your mum to thank for that. Or had, I guess. I can sense a deep scar in our bloodline. A gaping more intent on consuming itself into oblivion. I can only hope we mend it during our time together here. <laughs> Great, good for you. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. 
So the funeral. It's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Need any help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. Just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. Tap of the sea is straight in. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to say that one because that's fucked. Remain silent. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. So some we shouldn't say, some we should say. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and here it is, the Scala Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Why is half of it hanging over a cliff? Someone used to use, someone used to cram cramped apartments in grey cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it, perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot long, long time ago. Man, the art in this game is beautiful, by the way. Just saying. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Love it. I really, really always enjoy the, uh, the two-tone thing. Yeah, ever since, uh, Oberdin. It's really blown me away. As soon as you enter, you're hit with a du blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear door creaks on their hinges and the arches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room your bathroom, and the kitchen, and hallways I guess, but only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. <laughs> you really let this place go, huh? <laughs> I really thought you all were loaded. Can't afford to fix this dump? So you live here? Yeah, and I'm letting you stay here for free, so mind your manners. What did your mother not teach you about those? I was just asking. Should we take our tour? Follow me. Put your bags down and follow Tabitha along a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socialising with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixins for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip, some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Um, I can feel nature reclaiming this place. I feel a wild energy in this room, as if the natural world is creeping in to finally reclaim its territory. Okay, jeez, I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Janie to be more thorough this week. But you should know there's only so much anyone can do with the country house this old. It's always going to be a little grimy and worn, unlike your sleek city apartments. If a little dirt bothers you, you're going to have a rough time this week. Awesome, I love PB&J. How'd you know it was one of my favourites? That smile can't be real. I didn't, but good for you. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? I might want to eat something other than PB&J this week. Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, this is a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online, though. So I won't, wouldn't be going with you. Sweet, thanks. Cool, good talk. <laughs> Alright, what's next? What's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Was that your cat? What's its name? Fru Fru, do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Okay. You decide to follow Tabitha's advice. Shall we move on? The bathroom awaits. If it's her cat, she should know. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. 
We shouldn't walk around in the dark then. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must. If you must. It's a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains mystery stains paint the floor. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Guests. Um, lift the toilet seat. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. Whatever. A toilet's a toilet. Sure, it could be clean. I bet your business he's doing, and this is as good a place as any. Well, if you're pissing, that's not clean either. You do what you must, or rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot. It has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid. About her kid to get her to do it. So you better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff. So you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. <laughs> People have died here, haven't they? I sense a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. People have died here, haven't they? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Obviously, people have died here. Who used to sleep here? Like I said, this house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here, and now you'll sleep here. Carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. <laughs> okay, that's funny. This room is amazing. What a great room. This is way nicer than what I'm used to. Can't say I'm surprised. Each and every piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique, handed down through the family for generations. This is not an IKEA bedroom or whatever such nonsense you're used to in the city. I, I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths some right away, and others down the line. Cool. Are you sure you can't take the day off? It's a special occasion, your cousin's in town. No, some of us have responsibilities. If you think about it, isn't family the greatest responsibility of the world? <laughs> Ha! Huh, that's rich came from someone whose mother abandoned us because she didn't want to run the family business. And now here I am, the only person left to manage the estate, and here you are, asking to take me away from my duties to hang out with you. I'm going back to work. Stay here, go into town, do whatever you want, just keep out of trouble. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every scullard who came before me. Except for you and your mum. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. Can I come watch? What? No, the mine's dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. I didn't know we owned a coal mine. We don't own a coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your side of the family forfeited any claim to it years ago. <laughs> hashtag girl boss. Damn, I can't believe you're only in your 20s and already running a coal mine. Talk about hashtag girl boss. Don't patronize me. You? <laughs> I know you have nothing to your name, bros. Any other inane questions before I leave? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? You asked me to come to this funeral, but since the moment I got here, you've been acting like I spat in your coffee. What's going on? Was it something I said? Okay, I'm sorry I've been testy since you've got here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please, just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and the sprawling, decrepit estate. <gasps> PB and J. <laughs> you haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. A PB and J sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. 
You're back in the kitchen ready to craft a beautiful, beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task, given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh the fear, your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, plates, and a knife. Oh no. <laughs> fridge? As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out in all caps. Below it, a separate handwriting, other words, okie dokie. She sounds fun. You open the fridge. You only feel a deep urge to wash your hands even though you've yet to touch anything other than the handle. Um, jelly. You reach for one of the unopened geek jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its ex expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realise it's recent. Ha, ah, jelly's invincible, come on, it's fine. This was either purchased specifically for you, or the jelly's one of the few things in the kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need to now is a plate, a knife, bread, and some peanut butter. Better close this fridge and keep looking. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Pantry. Sounds like a peanut butter place to me. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. Bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great. One step close, closer to a satisfying snack. Who knew that PB&J sandwich was going to be such an ordeal? <laughs> All you need now is a plate, a knife, and some peanut butter. Peanut butter. The king of nut butters, and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. The only thing you need now are a plate and a knife. Alright. Where do those get kept? In the drawers, maybe? The cabinets? Let's try that. The cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware, and oddly enough, the utensils. A plate and a butter knife. Perfect. This is the last ingredient you need to make your PB&J. Time to get to work. Examine the mug. It reads, I was blown away at blowing rock NC. So your aunt and cousin actually travel sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your trip home through blowing rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Pearl, An Pearl Ann, so it wasn't her 50th. From the few stories you heard from your mum, Pearl Ann wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. <laughs> I don't need a bowl. Alright, let's do it. Make that PB&J. Despite the state of the horrendous kitchen, you've successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations! You can feed yourself. I'm a genius. A job well done. All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Approach, approach Fru Fru. The cat hisses as you draw near, but remains firmly in place. This is clearly Fru Fru's spot on the counter. Uh, we'll just back away. I don't want to get hurt. Check out the garden. Let's do that. Whoa. The garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. You don't think you want to go out there after all. Are you even up to date with your tetanus shots? Oh, it looks nice. Like, very nice. We're done here. Congratulations, you've eaten and had a full have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Investigate the forbidden wings of the estate. That's probably not a good idea. Uh, let's head into town. So much left for you to do other than to head out and explore town. You do just that. No reason to stick around, right? If you'd known you'd be winding up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop. Especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate clean between wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Then maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. <laughs> then again, maybe it's the perfect time. It's really pretty out here. Man, there's so many images. It must have taken ages to make all these images. Finally, you make it back to town. The Hollow, as the guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked, and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Doggy! Gretchen, come back! Quit bothering strangers! Oh, I haven't seen you around here before. Hot. The young woman is noticeably flustered by your appearance. It's a phenomenon that you, as a hot, are all too familiar with. Sorry about that, Gretchen. She can be very slippery when she wants to be. I hope she didn't scare you. Hmm. 
Pet the dog? You reach out and scratch the creature behind the ears. Her fur is soft and warm. She wheezes excitedly, digging her nose into your palm and licking your hand. Oh, I'm so glad you two are getting along. Isn't she just the cutest? With how energetic she gets, you never know. You'd never know she's 17. She's 17? It's gotta be real old for a dog, right? It sure is. She's about 84 in dog years. I'm hoping she beats the current record holder and makes it to 19. Or better yet, 20. The more time we get together, the better. Isn't that right, Gretchen? Ah, but what am I doing? I got so caught up in the excitement of meeting someone new that I entirely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Stella. Stella, sorry. It's not often I see a strange face in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, eh? The Scarlet Funeral. Take my boiled peanuts! <laughs> you hold out the dripping bag of peanuts. It's polite to offer food in new social situations. Well, that's really kind of you to offer, but I couldn't take your food. You should hang on to those in case you get peckish. Anyways, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you're Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. How's she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her. All alone up in that big house. <laughs> a darkness hangs over her. Whatever consumes her goes beyond the death of her mother and poisons her very soul. Not bad, huh? She's always been a little rough around the edges. I figured she'd probably be having a rough, a tough go of things, but that doesn't sound good at all. That or you have a special way with words. <laughs> it's that one. Are you two friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to be able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had at least to get along with everyone else. She was a great ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's a Scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was that. Oh, if you just go to town, if you just go to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. <laughs> it's my only option. There's a few people around here. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food ha hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with a comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize there is a stranger has entered the establishment. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Bruce. Just in town for the funeral. Nice to meet you all. The woman behind the counter beams at you. Hello there and welcome to the holler. You just let us know if you need anything, okay? You nod politely, giving a small wave as you and Stella slide into the nearest booth. Looks like you'll probably be the talk of the town for a while. It's not often folks around here meet many strangers. And with who you're related to? Well, folks love their gossip, you know. Hey Stella, I went ahead and fixed, a, fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Aw oh, shucks, thanks Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Anything for you, Dala? <laughs> I'm gonna just keep offering everyone peanuts. <laughs> offering peanuts. You hold out the still dripping bag of boiled peanuts. Gretchen sniffs at the spatters of brine on the table and licks her lips expectantly. No thanks, I shouldn't take gifts while I'm on my shift. Anything I can get you though? <laughs> I have a coffee. Just a coffee, thanks. No problem. Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning you nerve turning to you nervously. Oh, and uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Should have gone for the biscuit. They're really good, but I guess you've got all week. Maybe you'll get one tomorrow. You know, if you ever want to get rid of those peanuts, there's a trash can right by the door. Anyway, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. I'm going to hang on to the peanuts specifically so I can shove them in everybody's face. <laughs> There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids. But I do it every month every anyway. And I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. It should be right after the funeral too, so it'll be a special occasion. Cool. Sounds neat. Maybe I'll check some of these things out. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day to day, no idea how you, any idea why you want to kill time for the rest of the week? No clue. Honestly, I have no clue. Well, you're in luck. 
as you happen to run into the person who knows all the best stuff to do around here and has limitless time to show you around. My boss is pretty forgiving. Oh wait, you probably wouldn't get that joke since we don't know each other that well. I'm self-employed, so I'm my own boss. So I'm forgiving myself. Get it? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Before Stella can finish, Avery returns biscuits and tow. Hey, Winnie wanted to give you a biscuit. On the house. She sends her condolences. You didn't have to do that. It looks great. No worries, hope you enjoy it. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles in your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You don't even need to taste it to know that it's good. Divinity given buttery form. Looks like a scone, not a biscuit. Although I... I don't know. I think, I think there's some differences between what Americans call certain things and what we call certain things. I don't really know. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth. As if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. It sounds like a scone to me. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Whoa. This is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? Haha. <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Um, what kind of videos do you do? She hunts cryptids. Well, that sounds fucking fascinating. I'll subscribe right now. You should really check out her channel, Bruce. It's amazing. I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh, yeah. The Catawba... 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 River Runner? What? I didn't expect... How does that work? I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Katawaba River. And that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella puts out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that's the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've ever seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara. It must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was. And I'm the, uh, I'm the one who saw the thing with my own eyes. Uh, whatever it is, you should leave it alone. Oh, don't worry. I have a strict take-only videos, leave-only footprints policy. I never harm the creatures I'm after. I wish I knew to observe, like a proper, proper documentarian. I was curious to see what you thought, though, since there was so much controversy on Twitter and in my comment section over what it actually was. There was even actual experts weighing in. It was cool, honestly, and it meant the video did great numbers. Personally, I'm a big fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. I want a capybara. <laughs> so I can put a fucking sweet hat on it. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. <laughs> exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free. And now will forever roam the Catalba, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So speaking of things to do around here, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you'd like to come along. It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm going after the... Wait, no spoilers. Oops, sorry Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you all around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. What's Skunk Ape? It's like Bigfoot, but smellier. That sounds worse than Bigfoot. Most Skunk Ape sightings are from Florida. Of course they are. But while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from town, from a town over, claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say? Want to tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd love to come along. That's great. It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods. 
flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun. And that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us. Get the old gang back together, though. I guess Kanika has a has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole. If he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it. Waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or... Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind... I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. He's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah. He's just here for the week. Anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Alright, we need to wrap this one up because we're super duper out of time. But I'm fascinated. <laughs> we have to see where this goes. So we will be back tomorrow for another episode of Scarlet Hollow. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.